We've installed an air source heat pump in our 1901 Victorian terrace. We thought we understood all about it before we began. But there's all sorts of bits and pieces along the way and questions that it would have been lovely to have the answers to. And that's why I'm doing this video for you now. Let's start with understanding how a heat pump works. The science of it is that when you compress air, it produces heat. So the air source heat pump takes air from outside, compresses it and brings the heat into your house, into your water system, which then runs your radiators, your underfloor heating, any hot air system that you have, and it puts it into your hot water tank. Now, heat pumps have been around for ages. We just have never known it particularly. The one you'll be most familiar with is your fridge or your freezer, and they do exactly the same thing, but the other way round. So the fridge will take the air from inside the box, compress it and put it outside. And that's why the element on the outside of your fridge is always hot. And the air source is doing exactly the same. It's taking the air from outside, compressing it and putting the warmth into your house. Now, this is where it gets exciting. The gas boiler has to actually create the heat to warm your house. So if you put in one unit of energy, it'll give you one unit of heat out. Now remember the air source isn't creating the heat, it's just moving it from outside to inside. So you put in one unit of energy and it gives you between three, three and five units of heat. This is called the coefficient of performance, COP. Put that together with using renewable energy, and it means you're putting in renewable energy for that one unit. You're getting out three to five units of heat. So in terms of your carbon emissions, you're heating your house on zero. So what's it like to live with a heat pump? Well, this is one of the things that bothers people. A gas boiler will run generally at 65 degrees centigrade. A heat pump will run between 45 and 55 degrees. So it's constantly going at a lower temperature. But the important thing to understand is that you use them differently. I think of it as like the difference between a sprinter and a marathon runner. If you take the gas boiler as the sprinter, it comes on an hour before you wake up in the morning and it goes like mad to heat up the air in the house so you get up and it's warm. As soon as you go to work, it switches off and the whole house goes cold again. And then just before you're coming home, it run, 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 heat up and make the air warm again. So it's always going from cold to warm to cold to warm. The air source heat pump is like a marathon runner. It doesn't do all this switching on and switching off. It just chugs along at a lower pace all the time. So we don't turn ours off. We do have uh, a thermostat which takes it down a bit lower at night, but it never goes off completely. It just keeps going and what it's doing is Whereas the gas boiler warms up the air in the house, the air source heat pump heats the air, but also the fabric of the house. So of course that makes more sense of the insulation as well, that it's holding all the heat. So your house becomes a little bit like a storage heater. The decision about a supplier of a heat pump is a really big one, because when people complain about problems with their heat pump, it's generally in the fitting. It's very rarely with the actual heat pump itself. So take plenty of, re of recommendations. Ask every supplier if you can speak with previous customers, especially if they've had the heat pump for a year or two. Go and talk with them. Go and visit heat pumps. There's actually a website called Visit a Heat Pump. Once that's done, then the supplier will want to come round and talk with you, visit your house. They'll want to look at your present energy usage. They'll look at the state of the house, the amount of insulation you have, the states of your doors and windows. They'll look at the size of your house. And from all of that, the, the layout from all of that, they will make a heat loss calculation, which will help them determine the size of heat pump you need. They'll also look at the positioning of the heat pump. Where can you put it outside and inside? And the distance from neighbours, the decibel level, all of these different factors. And from all of that, they can come back and recommend exactly what you need. 
Because the measurements are so detailed, it's really important that you can tell your supplier exactly what else you're going to do to your house. If the heat pump is going in as part of a retrofit, they need to understand how much insulation you're putting in, how airtight the house is going to be. Otherwise, they'll end up suggesting you put in a bigger heat pump than you need, which makes it more expensive to buy and more expensive to run. Two things you need to think about from the outset. One is where would you put the heat pump on the outside of your house? So it needs to be at least one metre from the boundary of your neighbour's house and it can be no more than 42 decibels of sound when listened to from your neighbour's property. So what is 42 decibels? It's about the sound that's coming from your fridge when it's on, so it's not terribly loud, but that does need to be calculated. If you don't have somewhere attached to the house where you can put the heat pump, you can put it further down your garden if that's a possibility. Inside your house, you're going to need a cupboard of about the size of a hot water tank. So if you've already got a hot water tank, you're okay. If you've got a um, condensing boiler, then you might have to find space to put the inside of, your, of the air pump. There are some common worries about having a heat pump. The first and the biggest one is noise. I am sitting now in the room that is underneath the heat pump. It's on a flat roof immediately above my head. I can honestly say I live and work in this room a lot and I only ever notice it when it's extremely cold outside and then there's like a gentle thrum. Another big concern is that of the cost of running it. So let's be clear to start with any house that is not well insulated and not airtight is going to cost a lot of money to run because it's losing heat through chimneys, through faulty windows, through gaps in the pointing, all sorts of places through under the floor. So every house needs to be insulated and made airtight, of course. So if you're running an air source heat pump in a badly insulated house, you may pay out a bit more because the heat pump will keep going whereas the gas just switches off and your house gets really cold before it does its sprint again. Suppliers may well tell you that you need bigger radiators. That's because of the heat pump running at 55 degrees. So they'll want you to have a bigger surface area to produce heat for the room. This is what the big radiators look like. We've had this in for four years. The technology is moving so fast, I think they're probably a lot better looking now than they were then. But this is what they look like. We've had it in the bedroom for those four years and honestly I can tell you we've never switched it on. So that's where it's important to be able to be really clear what you're going to do to your house. Uh, and then you can make an informed decision about whether you need bigger radiators or whether the ones you've got are absolutely fine. Another concern is the cost of actually buying it. So the general price is between £12,500 and £13,000, but you get 7500 of that back from the government. And also talk with your energy provider. I know Octopus uh, will fit heat pumps much cheaper than that. But in the end, it's not really much more than getting a good gas boiler. With regard to planning permission, you shouldn't need any planning permission to put a heat pump on your house unless you've a really old heritage house. If you live in a conservation area, you probably won't be able to put it on the front. But honestly, most people don't want to put it on the front anyway unless they've got to. So planning permission should not be a problem. The use of gas boilers will be phased out of all old houses from 2035. So any time now that you can put in an air source heat pump, the better it's going to be for you. You're not gonna have this rush at the end. 